Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to point out that this is the first time that I actually give this talk. So if you have any feedback, bad or good, or bad or bad, just please let me know. So my talk is called Stop the Dip Fast, and uh, you will understand what I mean. I can't see the thing. There we go. Um, you'll understand what I mean. So when I started coding, which was not that long ago, which was about like, I don't know, six years ago or something, everything that I coded was in tables because that was the way we coded websites back then, and I mean after Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver was also a thing. Uh, I didn't do front page, so that was good. Um, so when I started coding, everything was tables. And uh, we're so much better now, right? Because we have a lot of like web frameworks, and React, and Vue, and all of the new stuff. But the thing is, if you really think about it, like really hard, if you just stop for two seconds and you think about this, we just change tables to divs because everything on the web is now a fucking div. So that is literally what we do. And this is my talk, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, joking, joking. You're gonna put up with me for 20 more minutes. Good luck with that shit. Okay, so my name is Sarah. Like it has been explicit, I am a developer advocate at YLD. I am really into horrible, horrible movies like Sharknado. Watching people fail on screen gives me life for some good reason, I don't know. And like a true Portuguese person, I am really into football. Also just moved out of Portugal, so yay. That was good. And now you're thinking, you are clearly exaggerating, right? Like, there is no way that we just went back to the same thing. It's not like history repeats itself or anything, right? Not at all. Look at Trump. <clears throat> what? So this is the website of Gmail. And um, the, uh, if you look at it, don't look at my emails, OK? <laughs> if you look at it, this is literally <laughs> the worst. You're welcome. <laughs> so, this is just a bunch of divs. Like, some of them don't even have classes, and the ones that have classes are, like, completely not classes at all. And so, it, it actually literally gets the two worst parts of web development, which are divs and tables. And naming is apparently really fucking hard as well. And this is Dribbble, and Dribbble has exactly the same thing, which is literally everything is a div or an li, no, actually, it's OL, well, so that's good. They did that. OK. So these are two websites that are heavily used like every single day. This one has as classes, because I remember that we used to, like, when I started coding again, and up until fairly recent, I think until like two years, I searched things for class names, and that is gone. And uh, it's so hard to find things now. And if you look at the Dribbble website, there is a div with an ID of header. and um, and I think, I'm not sure, but I think that should be a header. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with a rule of thumb right now, okay? If you give a class to something or an ID to something that is an element, you should probably be that element, okay? So an A with a class of button should probably be a button. <laughs> just letting you know. So this is Twitter. Uh, we all love Twitter. Twitter is great, right? Um, and as you can see, it also is a huge list of divs which is pretty great. And it also has this beautiful thing that I have no idea what it is because this has too many divs right now. Where is that? Okay, it's in the next slide, screw it. So it has a div with a role of main that I will try to find, there we go. Div with a role of main. And um, also, if something, you put a role into something that is also an HTML element, I am pretty sure you should mean that HTML element instead of the role of an HTML element. Like, okay. So let's step back a little. And think about one thing. So HTML5 came, in, came out, <laughs> came out, woo, in 2014. <laughs> it was after I did, so that's something. Um, <laughs> it came out in 2000, did someone clap? Thank you. I don't know who did. <laughs> Get jokes on my thing. Um, it came out in 2014, which like, it doesn't seem that long ago because to us we're still like in 2012 in our minds. But um, the thing is, that was, no, oh, shit, I didn't put it. So that was four years ago. So that was four years ago. We've had HTML5 for four years. And with HTML5, we had a bunch of new like JavaScript things that are actually, actually not HTML. And we also got a new set of tags. Like There are way more tags than this, and there are tags that I actually didn't know it existed. But we got stuff like this. Like I'm not going to read it to you, but um, well, you, you, can, you can read stuff. Cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a thing, which is I'm gonna look at a tweet, 
And I'm gonna break that tweet down and see like, what is actually wrong and how we could improve this, how we could make the web a little bit more accessible, more SEO friendly, and just like more fucking readable to humans who also code. Because let's be, I can't, I can't distinguish all those divs. I just literally can. Okay, so uh, about on August 23rd, I lost my first flight ever. And it wasn't even in Amsterdam, it was in Ethro. Like, <laughs> it could have been like Luton or something because like the, the shuttle was delayed, but no, it was like Ethro, the best one. Um, so this is a tweet. This is the representation, visual representation of a tweet. And so a tweet has three parts. So it has the header that has information on it. So like my name and my Twitter handle and when, when I lost the airplane. And uh, it also has the contact, which literally just says that I missed my first flight ever. And it has the footer with actions. It also has the image, but as I realized, so Twitter, and do you know how they put the images on that side? It's a position absolute, and the rest of the things have a margin to just not, so I didn't want to put that in because I didn't know how to explain that. I was just like, tables could do that. Like, I'm not even saying use Flexbox, I'm literally just saying use floats. <laughs> so we're gonna ignore the picture, okay? We're just gonna ignore that part. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is look at these, um, look at all of these three parts, except the picture, because that was kind of dumb, because it's actually in the, it's not, it's not, it's not, just look at it. You're gonna be like, what? Um, and look at it in simplified Twitter code. So this is how their header looks like. So you have a div around everything, and then there's an A with an href of something, and a span that has a strong and a small with a class of time. What did I say about classes and um, things that have the same class as an HTML element? So how can we actually improve this to make this more readable for everyone, to make this way more accessible for everyone? So, First of all, this is a header. Headers are not only for the header of your actual content. You can use headers for articles. Anything can actually have a header. So it's just a, a section, a header section, literally. Just that it's that. So it's a, a, a header of a section. It doesn't have to be the thing. The only thing that is precisely only used once, should only be used once, it's a main. This should only be for used for main landmarks. The rest of it is you can use it whenever you want. I mean, not whenever you want. They have semantic meaning. You know what I mean. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go back to the, okay, not the point. So you have a header, that is the header of the tweet, that could be a section or whatever you want. And then you have an A. So I remove the span because like divs, spans have absolutely no semantic meaning other than the fact that they're really easy to write. And there's just like three words, like span, okay. And they're really good for JavaScript when you just want that part of your, no, not the point. Uh, so I remove that because I have no idea why that's there. And um, so I added a strong the same way. And then I add a time, which makes this, like you can understand what this, what, what I did does in a much simpler way than you can understand this. So you can see that this is a header that uh, has a person associated with it and has a time. You can also add an author or something, but in this case, I think this is, this is sufficiently decent enough. So this is the content. So the content is literally a div that has a paragraph in it. There's really not a lot you can do, so I just put it into a section because mains, like I said, should only be used once. Um, yeah, that's about it. So this is the footer. <clears throat> and I deleted a whole bunch of stuff from this footer. And um, so the first thing is that everything has two divs around everything, and then the button has a div inside of it, and I'm pretty sure that's not a thing. I'm not entirely sure, but um, from my very, uh, um, from my college degree that I don't have, I am pretty sure this is, this, is, this is not a thing. I'm pretty sure this one passed the W3C thing. But, so, for each of the elements in the footer, like for the like, retweet, and something, you have a div around everything. Divs are the new ULs. And then you have a button that has a div inside of it with a span that is an icon, and then you have a span with a number of people that liked it or retweeted it or replied to it. So, it's just a bunch of divs and spans. Like the entire, in no, okay. So this is how I made it look slightly better. So first of all, I, um, I don't have a lot of things to back this one up, but I think it's always a better idea to use SVGs instead of uh, stuff like Font Awesome. I don't think there's any need to like, bloat your people with more fonts that will probably may not load, and they may have a problem with that, and they're also not very good for accessibility, so you can just use SVGs, and if you give it, one thing about SVGs and accessibility is that um, 
If you don't give it a role of image, the, um, so the um, thing that reads the websites, the um, thing that reads the websites, will uh, we'll read through the tags of the SVG, and you don't want that. Like, no one wants to read tags of SVGs, so if you put a role of image, it will now read the tag, and all the tags, and you can add it as title to make it the, just like the like thing, and that's it. Um, oh, oh my god, how did I forget the name of the thing? Not the point. Thank you. That's literally the, 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 the that makes sense. So, um, like I said, footers and headers and everything can be used in several positions. So in this case, I'm, I'm using a footer for the footer of the section, that is in this case the tweet. And then you have a UL and just have allies. And uh, I deleted the, um, the weird spans and divs because I think they were just there for layout. I'm pretty sure they were just there for layout <laughs> reasons. Uh, which doesn't make any sense because they're not using Flexbox, but I don't know. So, and then you have a button with an SVG with a roll of image, and then you just put the text in it. So that makes way more sense. It has way less HTML in it, and it just looks slightly better. Okay. The thing that I've started to realize is that, like, I remember when this came out in 2014, and we were all really excited about this. Like, I remember that everyone was really excited about semantic HTML, and was really trying to make semantic HTML be a thing, and people trying to not use divs all the time, and not to use pens all the time. And I like stopped, and I was like, what happened? Why did we stop caring? And the only conclusion that I've had is that frameworks happened. So I am a JavaScript developer. I'm, I'm a front-end developer, but I'm also a JavaScript developer. And I use React, and I use Vue on a daily basis. And someone coughed, and I was like, <coughs> you don't belong here. <laughs> I don't belong in any conference, dude. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but I try my best to keep the thing still semantic. Because that is the biggest misconception, is that people, I think, stopped caring a bit when the framework started being a thing. And there are several reasons for that. There are way too many reasons for that, but I think this is something that we can combat. That's not a word. That we can fight all together. So, uh, so one thing that React didn't allow for a very long time, I don't know who has used React here or uses it like in a daily basis. Okay, cool, okay, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay, so for a long time, React didn't allow you to render more than one thing at the same time. What I mean by this is that something like this was impossible. You would get an error on your console saying that you can't render adjacent JSX elements. I still remember the exact error because this happened all the time to me. So this was not possible. And I want to point out that we're all very lazy. I'm very lazy, it's mostly me that is very lazy. And we could have thought about a way to split this into three different elements and find a way to just still do this. But the thing is, we are lazy. So instead of thinking about the best way, the most semantic way of achieving something, we just literally put a div around everything. And that worked all of a sudden, and there were no more errors, React didn't complain, we didn't have any accessibility testing for this kind of shit. So we're just like, oh great, you have a website, cool, dope. D display flex on that, all good. Um, so this happened, and this was a problem. Uh, up until, yeah, that's before we knew it, everything was a div. Um, so there's this thing in React 16. So in React 16, the whole core team of React was like, Peeps, we, like, we, we, we made the whole thing from scratch. It's super fast. It allows for all of this stuff. And also, we have fragments, so you don't have to put a div around everything. And no one cared about the rest of the stuff they made. Everyone was just like, oh my god, fragments. <laughs> and they were like, but we rewrote it. We're like, we don't care. We have fragments. So there is this new thing called fragments in React 16. Um, so basically, what fragments is, is that this actually doesn't render anything to the DOM. So what React 16 allowed was for you to return an array of elements. So when you return something like this, if you remove the fragment, you can also return an array and just put a comma between each element. So what a fragment does is literally that. So fragments don't render actually anything to DOM. They're completely DOM elements. They don't care. And, um, but I still find that a lot of people don't use fragments, either because they don't know about fragments or because they don't know about fragments. Um, and uh, this is something that I think is very helpful in us trying to make the web a little bit more accessible and more maintainable and more fucking readable. <laughs> so I also, I really like Vue. Uh, I like React and I like Vue. And every time that I try to explain this, uh, it's like trying to explain bisexuality to people and it's very confusing. And they're like, that's not how it works. And I'm like, that's exactly how it works. You can like do things at the same time. And they're like, wait, what? 
<laughs> Everyone is so confused by this thing. So I really like Vue. I think Vue is like the, uh, the Harry Potter of JavaScript frameworks, as in like it's really hard to find someone that hates Harry Potter because it's great. And uh, it's really hard to find someone that hates Vue. You haven't even used it, or you just you like it, or they're fanatics, but let's not get into that. So there's <laughs> What? <laughs> so there is bad news. The bad news in Vue is that there is no official way to support fragments. One thing that I think is sometimes misunderstood about Vue and React is that Vue is made, um, it has a core team, but it's mostly one dude who has two kids that does this entire thing. And um, he has help, but like the React is made in Facebook by, so, uh, by a number of people that are way smarter than me and um, they're good at what they do, and it's, it's a completely different thing. So like, Vue literally runs on a Patreon. It's a different type of thing. There are good news, which there are ways you can circumvent this, if that's a fucking word. So there is a thing called Vue Fragments, which doesn't support server-side rendering, but if you're not gonna do that, that's fine. And you can use templates, uh, so, uh, Vue doesn't run on JSX, I mean it can, but it runs on templates, and you can use them as DOM elements. What I mean by this is that, so for example, uh, if I have, oh, wait, I have, a, I have a thing. So this is Vue, who knows Vue? This is Vue for the rest of you. Um, so this is the JavaScript, and then you're like, oh my god, everything is in one file, I use CSS and JS. Everything is in one file anyway. So um, this is the JavaScript part, and I have an array that just has like stuff that gives you view. And if you just uh, v4 this and just add a template instead of a ul or something, you actually are not repeating code. So uh, you know, this just renders a dumb thing to the DOM, like fragments do. So there are a lot of ways that you can you can go around this and make the web slightly better. So I think the most important thing that you can take away from this talk, if there is one, is that. You should take care of your HTML. Like, we take very much, we, the JavaScript people, take a, uh, I don't know what that means, take, <laughs> take a lot of care into our JavaScript. Like, we're all super dry about our stuff. We're like, no repeating code, and uh, everything that can be a function will be a function. And, but then we get to JSX, and we get, we get on clicks on divs, and, um, and then we turn off all of the ESLint rules. <laughs> Because there is actually a plugin, a plugin for ESLint called uh, a JSX Accessibility or something that comes by default with Create React App. But yeah, that doesn't really work. Um, we can make more readable code. I think we've been doing this with JavaScript, we've been trying to do this with CSS, and we kind of like somewhere along the way forgot about HTML being a thing and uh, forgot that you can just like literally put HTML in a document and we can make way more readable code. We can make code that you look at it and it makes sense. That's what we want with JavaScript and that's the thing we should get with HTML as well. Main point is that we can do better. We've made amazing tools as developers. We make amazing websites and we made amazing stuff, but we forgot the basics. And I think it's important for us to sometimes remember the basics of where we started. And that, that sounded way deeper than I meant it to son. And uh, I also really like GraphQL. This is like the end of the talk. <laughs> Yay. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I also really like GraphQL, and um, GraphQL is bang. And I have a free course on the internet called Let's Learn GraphQL.com, where it's basically just a, a workshop that I did in uh, Ukraine, in Kiev, that if you want to learn GraphQL, it's completely free, and uh, you can take it on the internet. And you can also download it if you want. I don't know, it's fucking YouTube. You can do whatever you want. And uh, thank you so much for having me. And have a great day. My slides are at stopdipfest.now.sh.